I feel led to share something that the Lord only rarely on occasion takes out. You'll not hear it from another man, and I'm not sure that I'll ever be back here or any place that I'm going in these days. And it's over the issue of what in fact is reality. What in fact are true values? For what should men live? What, what is the purpose for our being? To be consumers? To ho- have a position in the economy that produces the goods that others might consume them and we ourselves? And that our whole life is given to having and spending, laying waste our powers and little we find in nature that is ours? An A for the day of anyone here who can recognize the poet from whom I've just quoted. You're not too conversant with poetry? That's your problem. You're you're not poetic enough. You're too matter of fact. You're too mechanical. You're too legal. You're too statistical. You're too... You're you're the kind of thing that the system wants that will be efficient because the, the reason for being in the system is efficacy to produce goods and distribute them and see to a certain prosperity and because it has no concern for that which is ultimate or eternal and doesn't realize that this lifetime is a preparation for that sin. Got the idea? No one has told it, no one has shown it. Because to persuade the world that this life presently is transient and preparatory for that which is eternal and abiding requires people who come down from that place who are in the world but not of it and exude eternity and not just possess it as a category so we need a presence in the earth of those that are really free from the influence of these powers and are marching by another beat and have a sense of those things that are invisible and eternal and know the eternal weight of glory that makes the present affliction both momentary and light. You know, when you begin to think like that, it's not long before you'll be saying with Paul, who is sufficient for these things? If what you are about art right now is a point of time which God not only knew from the beginning of creation, but was in his thought as works to walk in, that were established before the foundations of the earth were laid and need to be consummated and fulfilled this morning through the piece of dust that you are. That is to say, apostolic view of reality is always sensing the utter significance of what it is about in every moment of time. There's nothing casual. There's nothing light. Everything is altogether significant because it encapsulates the past and it points to the future and it has everything to do with the consummation of the whole salvific history of God, his name, his honor, and his glory. And it's got to come out of you. This is a lifestyle. This is a mode of being. This is a certain kind of consciousness that the world would condemn and maybe even take those people who subscribe to it and put them in mental institutions as being out of touch with reality because they have such a heightened sense that the moment that they are about is of ultimate and eternal significance. And yet the remarkable thing is that that is definitive reality and definitive sanity. And the other thing that thinks that this is just a transient moment, one like another, one Sunday like another, that is irregular, that is insane, that is unhealthy. And that kind of reality is not produced in a moment It's the work of a lifetime when a man is subjected because he has that call which he has not appointed for himself from the God who has given it and therefore is required to pass through experiences of a formative kind that have at its heart the cross. Because the enemy knows more than we how the issue of what is authentically apostolic and prophetic is the issue.